Have you experienced the awesome power of the Panasonic Real 3DO system? Obviously. Presenting 3DO, the most advanced home gaming system in the universe. It's time to put away your toys. 3DO from Panasonic Gold Star and Creative Labs. A new low price and free games. Mind graphics of Panasonic Real 3DO. 3DO. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 3DO Experience, the 3DO retrospective podcast where we talk about the 3DO company, the system, and everything in between. I am Bill, and this is Threk. How are you doing, Threk? Hey, Bill. I'm doing pretty all right. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Just trying to get through the rest of December for the most part. Uh, Christmas is at the time of this is this release is like going to be like literally like less than a week away, which is kind of insane. But yeah, and you're one of those guys who hates hates Christmas, right? No, not really. I I, <laughs> I, I like it more when it's just about family and not about commercialization and all that crap. Oh. But. Oh, we all we all know what it's about. It's yeah. It's it's about anything else, uh, at, at least in American in life and culture, and that is commodity consumption. Your your yeah. entire personality, as you can see behind me, my entire personality is dictated by what I spend my money on, and as you can see, it's music, and video games, and sports, of course. Yep. What else is there? There's nothing else. Yeah, it's. I do like this time of the year, though, just because, like, people do generally get somewhat nicer when they're not insane shopping people. <laughs> you see, my interaction with people around this time is when they are in um, the store buying stuff. So that's fair. And from my experience being a retail worker for many years, most people are fine. They're not too bad. It, but and some are actually decently nice but you get a couple that are just really shitty for some reason so yeah but it, it's that, that's everywhere yeah but i i think most people most people would agree with me for the most part customers are okay you know like if you just kind of leave them alone no big deal yeah oh but um so for this episode we're not really we had mentioned last week we're not going to be jumping into our next game quite yet we're going to take a little break in between just to have more time to actually get through the game. So need for speed is coming, but it's, it'll be next week. We do next... not have a need for speed for this episode. No, this episode's more of a kind of just we're getting close to the end of the year. And we figured we just chat about gaming in general, some stuff going on in the industry games. We played this year. What uh, basically just stuff that's going on. Just, this will be another general chat episode. Well, I can tell you one thing and that is in um, the Tales of the Discord backlog. I got my uh, Secret Santa stuff already, and um, this and this motherfucker bought me two games. Uh, he got me DMC, the the reboot, the definitive edition, and I think you'll like this one. He got me Tales of Arise, and I went, God damn it, because I was gonna play Vesperia, and I still want to play Vesperia, but he bought me Arise, so I feel like I should play that one. But as you have said before, it's better to play an older Tales game, like play them like the earlier ones before the later ones, right? Well, I like to say play like, when I say older, I mean more like middle of the range, kind of. Like, well, well, what I mean is that like if I say play Tales of Arise and then try to go back and play Vesperia, I'm going to be like, ooh, this isn't that good. Um, so... Arise is a bit of a special kind of case because Tales of Arise really did a lot of different stuff for the series. I'd say more like, say, playing like Zelia or like Berseria and then trying to go back to like Abyss or um, Symphonia or something. Okay. So Arise is like its own thing. Yeah, Arise is... The series is definitely trying a new direction out and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I'm curious what the next game is going to be. Is it because the footage I saw of it, it reminded me a little bit of like ease eight and nine. Is there a. So they, they're going for more of an action aspect to it this time around. 
Mm-hmm. Cause the, the, the biggest controversial point with the rise is that they got rid of the series, like most iconic feature, the which skits? is the, uh, not the skits. It's the, um, the multiplayer. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause I always forget these games are co-op. Yeah, during battles, like it, mm-hmm. it's not detrimental to the game, like without not having it. But it's just something that, like, it, it's such a cool idea that yeah. not having it for some arbitrary reason is just kind of weird. I can see that. I can see that. But, but yeah, m- maybe one of these days I can I can let the people know about my tales experience. So we'll see. I now own three tales games. Symphonia, your favorite, Vesperia, which is really good. I've played a bit of it, and Arise. So there we go. Yeah. Abyss is too expensive. Yeah, unfortunately, Abyss is only available on PlayStation 2 and 3DS, and yeah, neither are quite cheap at the moment. So, but on the plus side, um, the the guy who's now the head of head of the Tale series, he has said he is open to doing more like remasters and remakes and bringing like the, the legacy titles up. Like he's, he's down to do it. He just needs to know which ones to do, I guess. So I think you need to make a stink about <laughs> your, your love of abyss so we can get it again. And I, and I imagine that's probably one they will do since it is a, it's a fan favorite. And, and I, it's weird. You say people don't really like it because the reception I've read about it has been positive pretty generally. It's just, it, I think Symphonia is more is the more remembered one. See, the Abyss's problem is it's shoved in between Symphonia and Vesperia, two of the most popular games in the series. Yeah. And Abyss isn't even disliked. It's more, it's overlooked in a lot of ways. Like, the, the, okay. big thing, the thing with Abyss is, like, the people that played it generally love it. A lot of people who haven't played it, they see, like, the first quarter of the game and hate the main character and don't want to pick it up. So it's like Soul Calibur 3. Um, so in Soul Calibur 3, does the character get better? Well, what I mean by that is Soul Calibur 3 got sandwiched between its two popular uh, brothers. Oh, Soul gotcha. Calibur 2 was huge at the time, and it was multiplayer, yeah. and everybody loved that. And from what I remember, Sony got pissed that their version sold the worst, so they got it exclusively for the PS2 for the sequel, and then like nobody really played it. And then Soul Calibur 4, when that jumped to 316 PS3, at least with my friend group, it was a big deal when that came out. Um, and it still remains, I think, one of the more popular entries in the franchise. In fact, I rebought it, and I was very happy to, to own it again. So I mean, When it's the two that, sur- that surround it are 3 and 5, it's kind of expected it's going to be well regarded. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Nothing against 3. I think 3's biggest issue is the fact that a, it's exclusively on PlayStation 2, and also it has a game-breaking memory glitch. Yeah, but 3 has probably the best single-player content of the entire series, mm. which is a shame. And then 5, 5 isn't bad. 5's just kind of bland, you know? Mm. Like, wh- when did 5 come out? I forget what year that was. 2011? It was like late, yeah, it was like later PS3 okay. era, I want to say. Yeah, and then they had, I think it was Ezio. From Assassin's Creed, which was an okay choice, but it just seemed kind of whatever. Yeah, I remember you that know? game was mostly like lambasted for its story mode, which was kind of meh. Yeah, I haven't played five in a long time. I played it at a friend's house once, and I was like, this plays like four, but not good four, if that makes any sense. And then Did I've you, never um, I, I've never touched six. I do have six, but I've yet to six play. is okay. Yeah, it's not it has, the best it has fighter, Geralt, but it has Geralt, which is cute, and Two B. Uh, the the yeah. internet's the internet's favorite. So, but you know, it, I hope they do. I, I think they'll do seven at some point. It just depends on. Um, Bamco well, has I, to care. <laughs> well, I think they have to get take Tekken Eight out the gate first. Yeah, because that seems to be their big problem. Because they have two of the biggest fighting game franchises, so you know they have to kind of balance it out. But yeah, in any case, did you see a? Uh, uh james mccaffrey dead yeah yeah max Payne. that that sucked man because i, I know, know that they were because they're working on the because they're working on the remakes of one and two and i was just assuming they were going to get him back but i guess not now i'd honestly so, like them just to take his lines from the games and just reuse them because he's they haven't aged badly 
I think it depends on what they want to do with the story. True. Very you true. know, and and I assume you know the story of with McCaffrey in three. Uh, not really. What, what, what's going on with that one? So when um, Rockstar announced Max Payne three, um, McCaffrey didn't even know about it. In fact, um, ah. he had talked about how he wanted to reprise the role. And I think it was something that um, like Rockstar wasn't going to use him initially. But um, he kind of made a stink about it on the internet and got uh, some fan backing on it. So it uh, caused Rockstar to basically be like, okay, we'll get you in. And not only did he record his voice for Max Payne 3, he also did the mocap and they yeah. used his and they used his likeness hmm. as well. So Max Payne 3 is the most McCaffrey of the Max Paynes. So that, he got that to, game so got, is not as good as one and two, but it's still a good game. Oh, it's good. They're all good. Like, okay, so I played the entire trilogy last year. Um, actually in between my playing of Yakuza Like a Dragon. And I think all three games do something better than the other two. Like, I think all three are great, but all three of them have something that makes it stand out. Like, one, in my opinion, has the best, like, atmosphere and immersion. Like, I love the snowy New York streets, going into these horrible, dark, dingy apartment buildings, the weird dream sequences with the bad platforming, the comic book yeah. panel storyline, like a storyline stuff, like all of that is fantastic and it's iconic. And even just down to like Sam Blake's weird face, you oh, know, and uh, the, the lemon face. Yes, the lemon face. And even going up that weird like high tech building at the end of it, like the whole game is memorable, even if it hasn't aged well. It's all incredibly memorable. Max Payne 2, in my opinion, has the best story. Yes. I love Max Payne 2's story because, I mean, the fall of Max Payne, it has a double meaning to it, and it's just, it's told so well, and it ends with this very optimistic note of, you know, you can get over, like, trauma and grief, and that we can learn to move on, not let these things consume us, essentially, though somebody else has to die for him to realize that. Spoilers, sorry. But, um, but Max Payne 3... Despite having the worst story, in my opinion, like it's well written and everything, but coming off of Max Payne 2, it just feels like a step back. You can tell like, Remedy didn't do it. Well, yeah, like Dan Hauser and Sam Lake are completely different writers, yeah. um, which is fine. But I think if Max Payne 3 was like a sequel to Max Payne 1, it would be fine, right? Mm -hmm. But just coming off of two, it just it gave me whiplash almost. But I will say three has the best gameplay. Yeah, I love how that game plays. Oh my god! Like that's some of the best third-person shooting ever in a video game, mm. bar none. Um, so, and I usually say to people if they want to play just one of the Max Paynes, I would say play three, especially since one and two are getting those remakes in a couple years, um, yeah. and those will probably be the definitive versions of them. I'd say go ahead and play three. They'll probably never do anything special with it, anyways. They may remaster it, whatever that means, but. Beyond that, you know, just play Max Payne 3 now. It is really good. And as a standalone story, it's perfectly fine. Mm. Just in connection with the other two, it always kind of roughed me up. But but it's yeah, James McCa but James McCaffrey, sorry, he was fantastic in all three games. He was iconic. He did a lot of other stuff as well, like a lot of TV stuff. He was a um he was uh, he was on some soap opera that was big. Oh yeah. I think we've all been on a soap opera at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Even if we didn't know about it. It's funny you bring up that uh, the voice actor story, and that reminds me a lot of um, the you remember the Sly Cooper movie that just never happened. Yes, yes, and I do. They uh, they showed the trailer, and they it had Sly Murray and Bentley in it, and Murray and Bentley's voices were the same ones from the game, but they recast Sly for no reason. And yeah, yeah. Kevin, I assu I assume Kevin that's Milner because they came couldn't out get the guy to do it. No, Kevin Milner came out and was like, "They never asked me." Like he was like he was like what the hell? <laughs> it's weird how common that is with with like voice actors specifically that they just like don't say anything to him, even with like a McCaffrey or whatever. Like they don't say anything; they just sort of move on. Or also, um, what's his? I forget the the original voice of Kratos. You know, I forget oh, his. Yeah, I can't I, remember I forget, his name, but yeah, I forget his name. But like he got interviewed once. And 
he had talked about how they liked his voice at the start, right? And then I think it was Ascension. They had him do mocap for it as well as the voice. But the the original voice of Kratos, he's he's kind of more of a, I hate to use the term scrawny, but he's like a, a smaller dude in comparison to what you assume like a Kratos to be, right? And so they had issues with the mocap and everything. And with that big break between, was Ascension or 3? Which one was last? I forget. Ascen- Ascension. Okay, so between Ascension and 18, there was clearly a change in that they wanted to do something different. Hmm. So they had like said it, so they moved on to get, what's his name? Christopher, Christopher Judge? Is that correct? I think so. And, um, and he does a great job. Like He's a bigger, you know, the bigger guy, so he can do the mocap, and he has a real deep voice. You know, it's iconic and everything. And yeah, yeah the original guy, shit, I need to look his name up as I'm saying all this. Like Christopher he, Judge, Terrence C. Carson. Terrence C. Carson, thank you. Like, basically in the interview, he said he understands they wanted to move on and do something different, and he completely respects that. He just wish that they would have, like, told him. Yeah. You know, saying that, hey, we're going to move on or whatever. He felt he kind of got um, just kind of thrown to the side for somebody else. But that seems to be an issue with voice acting in general. Like, yeah. regardless, like regardless of the whole the infamous uh, Helena Taylor situation. Yeah, I'm bringing that up. Mm -hmm. Like, regardless of how that all went down, which went down really poorly, we all saw that in real time. Oof. Um, If anything, it just, it did show the sort of the treatment that voice actors get in the industry, which is like shit, you know, unless you're one of the big names. And even if you're one of the big names, like say, um, what's his name? Troy Baker. Troy Baker. When he like with the whole tales of Asperia thing, where he said he, oh yeah, done where, it. yeah, he said he would have done it, and they just didn't ask him because they didn't think he would be willing to do it, or he would ask for too much money. They didn't think he'd want to reprise his most iconic like star making role. <laughs> exactly. Like, it it it's like if, um, Sony decided to make like a like an Uncharted one remake, which I totally think they did, should do, and didn't and, get Nolan North. and don't ask Nolan, and it's like. That would everyone be like, why the fuck didn't you ask him? Like, he's right there. Like, I'm sure he would say in a heartbeat, like, you'd probably not even ask for that much to do it. But I don't know. Yeah. Sony's in a weird spot because speaking of Sony, um, I didn't look into the details of it, but there was that uh, the Insomniac leak that happened. Yeah. The all so the the game footage was kind of like whatever it's like that happens. Uh, I didn't look, I didn't look at any of that. So it was. A bunch of games got basically all of Insomniac's like data got leaked and uh, a bunch of games footage and stuff got shown. The concerning thing was a bunch of like passports and travel stuff got like leaked yeah. out as well, which is not the per- good. The personal information, I think, is the real shitty part because I'm seeing a little bit of discourse of people saying like people complaining about like talking about like gaming leaks and all that. And if you should do it, if it's journalism or whatever. And it's like it technically is because it's something that happened. And you're just Mm -hmm. kind of reporting on it. But the whole personal information thing really sucks. But I didn't look at any of the Insomniac leaks because I I don't really care. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, they're doing Spider-Man 2. Well, they did Spider-Man 2. People seem to really like it. Wolverine game now? Well, they announced that a while ago. But that little trailer for the Wolverine game, which looks, looks, I mean, we'll see what it is. I I don't think they could just do, like, Spider-Man but Wolverine, like, I think it needs to be different. I think if they use that X-Men Origins game as the basis and do something different based on that, I think it'll be really good. Mm. Um, I don't know what else was in that league as far as what other games were in there. I mean, if you want to say, really I, I don't really care, but... I just saw the Wolverine one and then saw, like, the travel stuff was getting leaked, and I was like, that's not good. Yeah, that's that's where I feel bad for all those people because they have to like change their passports and shit. I don't even know how you do that. So I'm I'm kind of impressed that uh, so Sony's owned Insomniac for like five years now. I want to say it feels like um, more. Yeah, it's it it's been longer it longer than it seems, but I'm amazed. Uh, Ted's still there. Uh, Ted Price. Because what's weird is that Sony technically owns the I owns this IP. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a Sony franchise that's only ever released on a Microsoft console. 
Yeah, because they technically own, like they can't release this game on PlayStation. Like Microsoft owns this because they published it. Yeah, but they have the, the I- publishing rights, but the IP itself is. Uh, yeah, so if they wanted to do a Sunset Overdrive two and make it Sony exclusive, they could totally do that. But I don't think they're ever going to do that. Well, especially because all Sunset Overdrive is, is it's just edgy Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, it's what I've heard. In fact, I think Dave's have been playing it, and it's on my it's on my to play list. In fact, this is one of the first Xbox games I bought, along with like Rise Son of Rome and shit. And I played through Rise Son of Rome, and it was. It was a game. Yeah. Um, I pl- <laughs> it's I, not played, bad. I borrowed a friend's Xbox and wanted to play Sunset Overdrive. I was like, this is good. Like, it's definitely Insomniac, but I'm like, this is just edgy Ratchet and Clank. But that doesn't, Which, sound, like I a, mean, that doesn't sound like a bad thing. No, it's, it's not a bad thing. Just to, I was just kind of like, I'm like, you know, I don't think we're really missing that much not playing it. <laughs> so, yeah. But that reminds me, I've, I've barely played Ratchet and Clank in my life. It's, a great series um i preferred sly personally out of Sony. oh Stick yeah Food. i'm a sly but boy i like sly and i like jack and daxter um particularly the, the first one the most jack and daxter i've played is daxter on the psp or playing yeah, it on the vita and i got halfway through it and i, and I just got kind of bored and stopped playing it yeah, it's repetitive it's fun but yeah. it's very repetitive very repetitive and it feels like there isn't any story like it doesn't really go anywhere well because it's it's like it's like a mid quill that's supposed to explain what daxter was doing between one and two but yeah yeah and i'm sure if you're like a huge dax and daxter lore fan like it's great but it was whatever yeah yeah that's a series i'd well not so much jack and daxter because i think that ship sailed i I really want to come back I would love for Sly to come back as well. I'm a big Sly Cooper fan. I've beaten every game in the series probably like twice or some shit like that. Like like Sly 2 is like one of my favorite games of all time. But the question is who's going to make it because so Sucker I mean, Punch... I mean, Sucker Punch is busy. Yeah, they're doing Ghosts of Whatever. And I think they would like to do another Sly Cooper game. I just don't think Sony would let them do it especially when we see how big the budgets are getting for these Sony games. Like I don't see Sony wanting to put like $200 million into a Sly Cooper five, you know, like I just, I just don't see that happening. Um, and then you have the other dev Sans games who I guess do VR games now. Yeah. They're owned by, they got purchased. I think Facebook owns them though. Okay. Cause, cause I remember when, when I was watching the game awards, which I do regret watching, um, like Sansru showed up with some like weird VR game. And when I saw their logo, I'm like, wait a minute, are those the Thieves in Time people? And sure enough, they yep. were. So they're yeah, owned they, they also by, made like Nancy Drew on the Wii. They made the two 3DS Sonic Boom games, you know, like the only decent Sonic Boom games. Well, there you go. That makes them better than Dimps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so they're owned by Oculus Studios, which basically means they're owned by oh, Facebook. Okay. So they work with John Carmack. Oh, wait, no, he's retired from that. Yeah. He, he, he like, left it, went to go do that for, like, a couple years, and then said, fuck it, I'm done. Yeah, and now occasionally live streams of John Romero talking about Doom. Which is funny as hell. It was cute to see. Cause it's oh, like, yeah, just the two Johns back together. Because it's, like, two different forms of autism, like, just chatting with each other, basically. You know, mm. it's great. Did you see any of that My House like Doom mod that was going around for a while? No. I don't keep up with Doom stuff. I've barely played the reboot. When I, I should sit down and properly play the reboot because I started playing it and I was like, this is good, but I'm not sure what people are like losing their shit over. But I imagine it's one of those, it gets even better as you keep going. Because like, there was no music. Cool. Like, yeah. like there was no soundtrack and I'm like I need that fucking music guys I assume it shows up later I just didn't yeah. get far enough it, it was a big love letter to like fans of like boomer shooters so oh yeah yeah because I've played the original Doom love it played Doom 2 it was more of the same um, Doom 3 I really need to sit down and play because it is different very different so Yo, I've even played true... Doom 64 Doom 64 is a lot of fun that's the true Doom 3 
for the original <laughs> series anyways <laughs> oh you hate doom 3 you no 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 I'm, not, I'm no i'm just saying it's the true doom 3 in terms of chronological order because it's actually part of the original series oh yeah because doom 3 is its own thing or is yeah, it doom like 3 is far like, in the future it's like a semi reboot i it, it's unclear yeah because 2016 was supposed to be doom 4 i think it started out as doom 4 and then it got canceled and then brought back as 2016 yeah a, a friend of mine described it as like doom 2016 is a very good game but doom eternal is a fantastic game mm. so you play doom 2016 to play doom eternal because eternal looks in fucking sane but it's good it looks like it's a, a very good game yeah they're both I'm on game pass even, so i'll get there and i'm not even a big first person shooter guy so i like fps's um but they're part of like my regular rotation where it's like I find myself playing third person games more, but I need an FPS to kind of break it up every once in a while. Like I played through Titanfall 2 mm. and that was have you played Titanfall 2? I have not because I wasn't a fan of the first one. I should probably play two because I've heard it's significantly better. That campaign is fantastic. That's like the key. What, what everybody says about it, they're correct. Like it is it's I beat it in like less than eight hours. Um, and for what it was, it was a really well told story. BT is probably like one of my favorite side characters in games ever now. Like the Titan that you're like, he has his own personality. He's fantastic. Um, and yeah, it's a super fun game. It is kind of boomer shooter y because it's very like fast paced, you know, and it's a lot of like wall running and sliding. I described it as if Vanquish was a first person shooter that has like mech parts. And the mech shooting is just different enough from the on shooting to feel like it's its own thing you know mm. they it's, it's just it's a very cleverly made first person shooter you know it's very clever in what it does and i think the those are the same guys who did uh fallen order and yep. survivor so respawn entertainment yeah so they're pretty good i hope ea doesn't kill them because so far they're doing uh, pretty good they're doing good right now so they're still safe the second they have a <laughs> the second they have a stinker then they're in trouble well, I almost think that Respawn might be the e the EA dev studio that they just be like, you're the single player guys. Like you make the single player games, right? Yeah. That but they're Dice kind of getting away with that. Yeah, exactly. And then Bioware is just kind of in its a weird state of flux right now. <laughs> I I want. I feel what, I I'm worried about them. I just want to know what that new Mass Effect's going to be. That's like. Well, we still don't know anything about Dragon. We've seen more of the new Mass Effect than Dragon Age Dreadfall. Yeah. You know, I still haven't played the Dragon Age games, but like they've announced Dragon Age Dreadfall and they're like, that's what's coming before Mass Effect 4. Or if, I don't I don't think they're going to call it Mass Effect 4. No, I think I, that's, I, I think that's gonna, too daunting. Of a, they're going to be title. lame. They're going to be lame and just call it Mass Effect again or something. <laughs> they better not do that. They better not. I, I, but I think Ma calling it Mass Effect Four is too daunting of a title because, well, especially like, because if how are we going to follow three? Yeah, is it going to be standalone or is it actually going back to the uh, the original continuity? I think it is a sequel because that original like N Seven trailer from a couple years ago, like it shows the um I forget what it's called the the ships that you jump through. Oh, the warp gates. The warp gates, yeah, like it shows one that's destroyed and shows a bunch of stuff that's blown up, and it uh, definitely looks like remnants of the Reaper War from three. Okay. I'm so, curious. and I think it canonizes the destroy ending, which kind of makes sense. Like, I mean, we could go into a whole discussion about the Mass Effect three ending, but I think the destroy ending is the the canon one because it makes the most sense to me. Yeah, the other two don't make any sense. No. So I think they're going to canonize the destroy ending, but the destroy ending where Shepard lives. Because there's I, that I, one. Because there, there's that little like rubble bit where it's like you hear like the breath and it's like, oh, yeah, Shepard somehow survived. The, twi the twitch, like I, the twitch that like people still yeah. argue about to this day. No, that means Shepard's alive. Like, why else would they have that? You know? Well, I love like, I love when like the, the fans like go into their like weird like, crazy like trying to justify things where they're like he can't be alive he's dead that would kill the thing i'm like you brought him back like once already it's like what would stop yeah. them from doing it again it's a video game like y'all bitch y'all bitched about the three ending anyways but so like wh why would bringing back shepherd make it any like worse like i don't I think that would be necessarily a bad thing like i imagine the plot of a new mass effect would just be 
um, like your your team just trying to like keep it together. Like their whole part, they're part of like trying to rebuild the galaxy after the Reaper War, mm. and like inner conflict is now ar- arisen between all of these different species due to this. You know, trying to trying to have some form of peace after this, and and then and then they start hearing rumors of a of a yeah, sorry of a shepherd like figure like out somewhere you know like there's this guy who looks like shepherd and he's like trying to find his way through the galaxy or something like like i don't think you play a shepherd i wouldn't do that like it's him trying to get back that seems boring you know you're kind of like a like a dragon like you move on to a new protagonist but still have the old protagonist around well you want to like myth you want to turn him into like a myth like a legend because that's kind of what they were doing by the end of it anyways that like shepherd is like he's the special one or she's the special one whichever you chose and and i think you kind of want to do that with him in another like mass effect you know maybe maybe it's like you start as a a brand new recruit that is like trying to help piece everything together right and kind of be the peacemaker in a way but then you know, they're like, oh, is Shepard, did he survive? You know, I mean, th- there's a lot. There's a lot you could do with a new Mass Effect that I think would be really good. But I'm in no hurry for it. Like, take as much time as no, they need because yeah. it needs to be good. I haven't played Andromeda. I know people don't like Andromeda, but I still definitely want to play it. So the, the gameplay is great. It's just everything else is <laughs> it, all over the place. <laughs> it's not the Edmonton team right in that game. No. <laughs> yeah. But what I heard about Mass Effect 3 that was interesting was the head writer of 1 and 2 left before 3. Yeah. And he had a whole different idea for the ending of 3. And his ending, when I read it, I was like, hmm, like that's good. Well, at least like the idea that he had for how he would have finished off three because he he was his writing was going to be the same thing. Like it leads into the Reaper war and everything. It was, it was going to happen. So, but his idea for finishing it off was trying to, I think make more of a statement on things and try to make something that was more heavy, but felt like a good ending. Yeah. Shame. We didn't get it because then we wouldn't, but if we did get it, we wouldn't get the funny stories of people suing EA over the ending of three, which is, the funniest thing I've ever read I, in my life. I never got the hate for three. I, I thought three was a, it's f- a perfectly fine game. Outside of the ending, it's my favorite game in the series. But the, because the of the Citadel DLC is so good. Oh, it is. But because the thing is with the ending of three, it's not great. It isn't. But I think the issue is more in the presentation of it and that it feels like they're not really committing to it. You know? Yeah. It, to me, it feels like they got to that point and went, oh, shit, we actually have to do some kind of ending. Um, um, and they thought about it for like 20 minutes and just kind of threw it out there. That That's the issue I have with it. Um, it could have been better, but it's not that bad. It's yeah, really that, not. That's definitely a series I want to f- finish replaying next year at some point. Yeah. Go right I'm, in the middle of, I'm in the middle of one right now. Uh, the reason one's taking me fucking forever is because I'm stupidly exploring every fucking lifeless rock with the fucking tank. <laughs> You're playing the legendary edition, right? Oh yeah. That is, okay. Good, good, good. That is the way to play those games nowadays. Um, well, that also one, apparently... one specifically, cause they remade yeah. one, two and three are just, they're the same as they were. Yeah. Uh, the reason also one, two, because I originally played one on the PS3 port and my God, you want, to talk, about, you want to talk about shit. Oh uh, God. The, you turned me into a death metal vocalist with that one. Yeah. Like that well, was because bad. we didn't we didn't get one initially on PlayStation 3. No, so. it wasn't until like what, like 2012 or some shit? Like it when was the, super they, late. When they released the trilogy, um, they ported it over and they did a half assed porting job. Yeah. Because it was originally published by Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Before the EA buyout. Yeah. But I think that was their last game before the EA buyout it too. I think it was. Yeah. Or it might have been um shit uh sonic sonic chronicles oh fuck that game <laughs> <laughs> how in the hell because that game is between i think it's between mass effect one and like dragon age origins or some shit like it's mm-hmm. it's in between some of like bioware's heavy hitters and somehow it was also they made just, by their c team so yeah they just farted that turd out you know like i definitely want to 
play through the whole thing. Oh, it's worth playing just to see how fucking bad it is. <laughs> like, yeah, this is Bioware. <laughs> yeah, because like at the same time, a friend of mine's like, dude, you know, there was like a Spyro RPG on the DS. And I was like, what? I mean, and I looked better. into Even it. That's better than Sonic Chronicles. Yeah, it's what Spyro, what Shadow, Shadow Legacy. Shadow Legacy, yeah. Yeah, and I, at first I was like, is this going to be like some rough ass like 2D or like turn-based RPG? Because I'm all in. And it's just like a, it's like those GBA Spyro games, but with like RPG elements. Hmm. So I'm just like, I, it's kind of boring. It was made by the same studio that I think did the Sims games on DS. Okay. That kind of makes sense. Hilarious to me. Yeah, and the, it, Shadow Legacy isn't. It's not bad, but no, it, it's it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't worth sitting down and playing the whole thing. It, the uh, the most fascinating thing about it is it's um before the 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 remake trilogy. It was the final appearance of classic Spyro. It's actually Spyro Six technically. Yeah, yeah, because then they yeah they did the Legend reboot stuff, which I think gets too much hate. Like they're not yeah. bad games. They're they're fine. They're just like not as good as what people expected them to be. I guess you could say. I mean, I can understand that. It, it feels like they're trying to do something that's more, um, what's the word? Serious, darker, and like, edgier. Yeah, edgy, edgy. That's the word. But like, but it feels like it's going from like E ten plus to teen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's and it's like I mean I guess, but. I don't know. But yeah, Sonic Chronicles, yeah, it was between Mass Effect 1 and Dragon Age Origins. Good God. Yeah, what a, <laughs> That's what a weird, weird blip on uh, Bioware's resume. Yeah, And I guess technically the first EA published Bioware game is Mass Effect Galaxy, the iOS one. Oh, yeah. But beyond that, it would be Dragon Age Origins. Yeah, yeah, I forgot it, any of those Mass Effect iOS games existed because, well, to be fair, I didn't get into Mass Effect till like last year. So, yeah, I honestly like that's a series I really want to play next year. And then the other one I've I've been saying for a while I'm going to play is I'm going to finally sit down and play Fable. Oh, Fable's on my list too, especially being the Xbox fuck that I am. I need to I need to get Fable. Like I've played through all of Gears. I've started playing a bit of Halo with Chris. And um, and so I'm like Fables. Well, I've played uh quite a bit of Forza, and I do like Forza. So I'm like, I need to give Fable a try, or at least again, because I tried Fable one, didn't like it at all. Apparently, tried, Fable two is a masterpiece. Fa I tried Fable. I tried Fable two, and I really liked it, but I didn't get very far in it. So, but they're yeah, like Matt shorter RPGs. So I'll sit through them. Yeah, Matt over on uh, Geek Addicts really wants to do a. Uh... An episode on it at some point so yeah but speaking of chris i am gonna start this guy oh soon. yeah it, it it's cyberpunk time baby it's good now so it's perfectly fine <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because i was thinking about it because the game i had just beaten right before this was assassin's creed unity and i think unity is a good game not a great game but a good game but if you think about it, Unity was like a trailblazer in bad business decisions because in 2014 when it came out, like games before that didn't release in that kind of state. Yeah, you know that was I mean? like, like the beginning of those like criminally broken games coming out at launch. Yes. And if you look up like YouTube compilations of bug stuff from Unity, it's hilarious. But playing through the game now, there's a few bugs and glitches, but nothing that like ruins the experience, you know. Yeah. I think um, another infamous one was like WWE 2K, 2K 20. 20. Yeah, that, yep. that was fucking hilarious. It was so game. bad. They took a year off to fix to do the 22 and they fixed it. And 22 is better. It is better. My, fa my favorite part of that whole situation, too, was like they fired Ukes. Like they were like, we don't need you. Like we can do this on our own, and then their first game is a fucking shit show, and it's like, oh, I think they had fired Ux a couple years before that. Yeah, they they had, and then it was like their first game that was really just a uh, visual concepts was like, oh, well, because yeah, because visual concept was they that's when it became the two K series, because before that it was like the SmackDown versus Raw stuff, which was Ux, and then just WWE thirteen. 
like that stuff that was ukes but then when they went over to 2k i believe it changed the visual concepts like so they shortly they, after they co-developed them for a while like they it was Ukes oh, and okay. visual concepts were working together yeah. And then okay. they fired Ukes, and then like the second they fired Ukes, it went to shit really fast, and everyone was like, huh. <laughs> I think they were kind of important. <laughs> yeah, and then they took a year off, and the newer ones, I'm told, are better. But Yeah, just... Visual Concepts was going through a really bad point there for a while. Yeah, they, they were one of the best, but I still remember them for NFL 2K5. Well, yeah, they made the um, best football game ever. Easy. And then, and now Ukes makes the the AEW games. Yeah, they also made that uh, weird like Earth Defense Force game <laughs> that came out. Oh, oh, they made one of those. They made one of the spinoffs. Like I, I forget, I think it was called like Iron Rain or something. Iron Rain. That is a sick fucking name. It's the that is like my favorite like crappy series ever because their games are the games are like pretty like stupid but like they're just fun because of it they made a pacific rim game probably no they did i'm looking at their game they made some ufc games uh a game the somehow <laughs> oh they made a game based on uh the real steel movie do you remember that yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh boy man the 2010s were weird um, i love i love looking at the developing the the gameography of some developers because it's hilarious sometimes like go sports uh, ski pets too oh yeah oh <laughs> pets what a series i would say speaking of um wrestling game developers um everybody knows the famous wwf no mercy right made by everyone's favorite aki right the aki corporation they have a weird history, don't they? Uh -huh. Because they still exist, but they're not Aki anymore. They are Sin Sophia Incorporated. And they make and they make like, do you know any of this? I, I knew Aki. I didn't know they they've since morphed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So they stopped being Aki. I think it was around 2009 ish because they made some sim city games for some reason um yep. they did they did the def jam games def jam 5 for new york's one of my favorites of all time oh the, the ultimate muscle game on gamecube was them that game's amazing um the last game they made was ready to rumble revolution as aki but then they switched to uh sin sophia and then they became known for the style savvy series and the pretty rhythm series so now they do like girly anime shit. Oh, they also did Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die Crossblade. Oh, the arcade one. Yeah. Yeah, and Fashion Dreamer. Like they went from making oh, hell yeah. <laughs> some of the best wrestling games of all time to making fucking like Well, you mean this doesn't look like something that we should all play? <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, if you want us to play Fashion Dreamer, let us know, okay? And we'll do it. It's on hey, the Switch. According to Tech Radar, it nails outfit creation, but lacks structure. <laughs> it's like it's like putting a dress on like a pile of ooze. Like there's no bones, it's but like, it looks cute. It's like that your outfit is beautiful, but it's a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Published by, oh, thank God, Marvelous and Exceed. Oh, thank God they came in and saved it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the people, we, the heroes we need but don't deserve. Exceed publishes, like, the greatest trash ever. Oh, yeah. Their, their shit is insane. They have a lot of good stuff as well. But, like, they used to look, publish the Yeast and uh, Legend of Heroes series. Yeah, then they kind of gave up. Well, no, the N NIS uh, came in and outbid them, I think. Ah, okay. Oh yeah, No More Heroes 3. Man, man, No More Heroes. Like you guys can't see it, but I have the um the Switch like special editions of 1 and 2. Like oh yeah, up, the, up there. Like they're very very I bought both of them and I have like the little Travis touchdown like flag or whatever from where he is. Like I did the whole thing cuz I really like No More Heroes. Did you ever play like, the one PS3 one? Or... No. No. I played a bit of one on the Wii back in the day and it was cool. But with the Switch, I played through both of them. 
In fact, I think I beat No More Heroes twice, the first one. That's and still my favorite uh, favorite save screen ever. That is a good save screen. And, Travis taking a shit. <laughs> but yeah, both games are great. Um, though I think two is so much better than one because it trims two? all the fluff. Because one Two's has some fluff better, in it. Uh, oh yeah. Like all the open world shit, yeah, which was just bullshit and didn't didn't need to be need, didn't need to exist. But, but we lost the the true majestic like coconut mini game. See the in the one the mini game I did was the gas, yeah, because that was the easiest to do and it made you the most money. Though I, I didn't hate the lawn mowing mini game. Yeah, that one was okay. The coconut one sucked ass, though. Was... especially when you did like kind of sharp turns, and he would go like, "Oh, <laughs> For... I like love uh, lawnmower, dude." Robert Robert Eck and Downs just doing like the hammiest voice acting ever. Yeah, so like I was excited to try three, and then well, I have three, and I started playing it right, and then it, it's all it's all well and good, no issues, right? But then it drops me in the open world, and I'm like. Oh, this is back. Yeah. Oh, no. And it's worse. Yeah. It's so bad. Like, I stopped playing it. Pseudo can't help And I haven't game. touched it since. Which is sad, because the game plays so well. That's yeah, the, the action stuff is solid, for sure. But I, I, I need to eventually... Maybe next year I should just, like, just say fuck it and just play through the whole thing. Play through three. Because I, 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 I feel like I should. I still remember the first time I played No More Heroes on the Wii. Um, I was... I was playing it and I got to like the first like recharge your lightsaber section. And I just thought of it. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Right now? <laughs> Imagine your parents walking in on that. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to explain. <laughs> I'd look at him and be like, I can't explain mom. Yeah. Well, well he is. Suda is working on a new game called hotel Barcelona. I'm sure it'll be a good game because everything Suda makes is generally good, it's, but it's just weird as fuck. I well, I think I think Berger has said this before, and there's some truth in it. And I think it's it depends on who he's working with. True, because I think Suda Suda is comparable to like Kojima, where he has like really good ideas for things, but if he doesn't have a team around him to make the game, it can it can be an issue. And with Suda, it's definitely true. Like like I played through all of um, Shadows of the Damned, right? And yeah. having Shinji Mikami there definitely helps because he's Shinji yeah. Mikami. But it's just it it but it I mean I think a lot of the game's issues there is EA again, yeah. EA just kind of like doing the game dirty. Especially when you hear what Suda wanted to do with Shadows of the Damned originally, which was yeah. essentially like Demon Souls before it was even a thing. Um which that would have been interesting to think of, like had Shad had Suda been there for like the Souls, like like right before it became a thing in general. Like who knows where things would be now? Um, though I think he said he finally owns it, Shadows of the Dam yeah. properly, and he's going to do a proper remaster of it. And who knows? Maybe people might start saying, "Oh, this game was actually good the whole time." And it's like it's a fine game. It's just nothing amazing. I still remember a lollipop chainsaw when that came out. And I remember seeing oh. it like that game, like people, that's like the, the biggest, like I can explain game. Well, I, I can't <laughs> explain game because it's so like, you, meme. yeah, it's yeah. like, cause the game is fucking amazing. Like it's such a well-made game, but it's so fucking oh, yeah. ridiculous. It's, it has like literally one of my favorite achievements ever, which is the, um, this, the first instance of like upskirt, you literally get an achievement that says, I swear I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> you will get that that's achievement. Good. It is fucking impossible not to get that achievement. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It reminds me of, um, I think it's Undertale, where like all the achievements in the game are just doing normal story stuff. And it's just like Toby saying, oh, I got a great idea for achievements. You know, he's like, oh, they're coming. I got, I got good ideas. You know, he just keeps leading you on that he has some when it's like he has nothing. It's great. One of my favorite achievements ever is the uh, the Stanley Parable. There's an achievement that's literally like just don't play the game for like ten years. Yeah, yeah. Actually, or I gotta I log. I gotta 15. start that up because I haven't played it in like since the first time it, since it came out. So I probably can get that achievement now. See, I probably could if I remembered the Steam account I bought it on. But yeah, but I can't remember. But, that oh that well. is a a game that unfortunately like you you only truly will get the experience the first time you play it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get the same experience again later. 
Yeah, it's a very Doki Doki Literature Club in that regard. Yeah, although there's more substance to Stanley Parable than Doki Doki Literature Club. Yeah, with Doki, it's more of just like kind of trying to fit the pieces yourself kind of a thing. And Do- Doki Doki is a one and done. And yeah, I mean, as much as, as much it was as a I great love, one and done. Oh, yeah, I love that game. Like, I like that game more than most people do. But um, even I'll admit it's a one and done. Like, you can only do so much there. Yeah, I think what I liked about it most was how it talks about it. it it's like Dan Salvato made that as sort of a his love hate relationship with anime. Yeah. You know, like the game reflects that. And as somebody who has a similar relationship with anime, I think I, I completely understand where he's coming from. Yeah, no, he, he did a really good job on it. And I love because it was like such a cultural phenomenon when it came out. Oh, yeah. Like, it's one of the few games that genuinely scared me. And video I games s- don't really do that. But it freaked me the fuck out. Oh, yeah. The first time we played, it's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, because there's some dark shit. Like, dark I still, shit. I still laugh my ass off watching the game Grumps play through that game. Oh, it's a fantastic playthrough. And I, mean, I have a feeling this. No idea. <laughs> and I have a feeling in like. 10 years the game is going to get a bit of a resurgence because yeah, all, all the, the all the because all the kids it. who don't know you know they're going to be like oh do you know about it, it's it's going to start it's going to have another cycle where it's like these kids are going to play it where they don't know what's going on but we old fucks do so we can like tease them about it yeah so but that'll be fun when that happens in fact i have the uh the switch like like fancy uh, physical edition down there oh uh, doki doki Legend club plus yeah, because I was like, it was, it was what, like 35 bucks or something. It wasn't a bad price and it came with a bunch of random goodies. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? Yeah. And you get some you know, bonus. support him. Okay. But he hasn't done like anything since, as far as he's I know. been working on something, but it's like it's taking him a long ass time. Nobody really knows what's going on with it. It's like Metroid Prime 4. Just well, like- if I, or if I know anything about like indie devs, it just takes them a long time to do anything. If you're Toby yeah. Fox, if you're Team Cherry, if you're um, just, um, just concerned don't ape, a, yeah, you just, know, just don't pull a Phil Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! But at least with like, from what I hear, like Toby Fox, the Undertale guy, from what I hear from yeah. people, he's just really lazy. That's the only reason yeah. the games take so fucking long is that he just drags his feet on doing everything. So it'll happen eventually. Like Team Cherry, I get the sense. Silk Song is farther along than people think. You know, you can throw the clown makeup on me if you want. I honestly don't care. I wasn't a big Hollow Knight fan, but I think at this point with Silk Song, when you're ready to talk about it, just shadow drop it. Just be like, oh, here it is, and it's ready to go. Fuck it. At this point. Um, and with Concerned Ape, he's the Stardew Valley guy, right? Yes. Like he still does what I like is how welcoming he is for like the modding community oh yeah and he welcomes like every random like mod you can do in fact like there's stories of him like changing the code of the game itself so it would work with mods better which is really nice yeah. of him to do um and i think he said he was taking a little break from chocolatier to get like the final stardew valley update out or another yeah. one or whatever the final one is you know so i have a lot of respect for him even though yeah. I'm not a Stardew Valley guy at all, that's just not my kind of game. But I that's, think he does a fantastic job with like the community and the game and all that. So, mad respect. Especially because like he he's a one man dude. Like he made that entire mm. thing basically on his own. Yeah, and it's like he could definitely afford to have other people with him because I know because I know people who give him money just because they feel bad. With like all the updates and all the extra stuff, which is free, they're like, I feel bad. I'm gonna give him a couple bucks. <laughs> just, yeah. well, I mean, he made him going. He made a bunch of money off of the physical editions because a bunch of people bought the Switch physicals when those came out. Oh, for sure. And I imagine, but I imagine the audience that he garners are people who would like, yeah, we'll we'll pay you, man, no problem. You know, yeah. just like out of the kindness of their heart, because people who love Stardew Valley, I think, are kind of kind in their in their soul somewhere. I think. You know, oh, yeah. They're not the people who own Harvest Moon, the name. Yeah. <laughs> That's a weird story. So uh, we were mentioning Harvest Moon. That is a fucking weird story <laughs> in itself. Yeah, Farm Simulators, a, a series I know a lot about. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's so weird because I've tried Harvest Moon. I've tried Story of Seasons. I, I keep trying these farming games. 
to see if like like even Animal Crossing. I'm like, you know, what's the fucking deal? Because it's the same with like even Minecraft, where I'll 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 play it for a little bit and be like, oh, this isn't too bad. You know, you just kind of fuck around a little bit, and then when I'm done, I'm just like, yeah, I'm done, and I don't think about it again. Like to me, those aren't games; they're toys. They like, are I'll play with them for a little bit, and then it's like, yeah, move on. They are the best time killing games, like probably ever. See, I could do that with like Hexic, Tetris, uh, Luminese, Lumines, whatever it's called. You know, like puzzle games are more my sort of time killer games. That's Hell, fair. even even Microsoft Jewel Two on my phone. You know, I I play that every day because I get Microsoft points or Xbox points doing that, so might as well. So, yeah, but that's just that's just how I am. I like puzzles. Mm. I'm trying to think, is there any other big releases coming out this year or is this, we pretty much done for the year? I don't year? think so. I don't think so. I mean, we, I mean, if you want, what was, what was your favorite game you played this year, Bill? Oh, Mario RPG by far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, still, well, I still haven't even gotten that yet just because by the time it was coming out, I was just busy with other things and I'll eventually me, get to it. it. It's on the list, but I'm trying me, not to like, buy so many games. Yeah. It's like, it's that one. Um, Star Ocean, the second story you are was fucking Ooh, phenomenal. That looks really good. In fact, Chris was telling me that I would love it and I probably would, but it, it's, it's again, it's like, I don't want to buy a game that's just going to sit on the shelf for like months yeah. and months and months. Like if I buy a game, it's like, I want to play it right then and there. I never picked up persona five Tactica. I forgot that came out. I forgot it came out too. And then um, I think Burger Champ played all the way through it. And he was like, yeah, it was fine. I saw people posting the soundtrack for it. And I was like, I got to get that at some point. But I think he, like most people are ready for Persona 6. Yeah, honestly. Though I I think next year they're going to announce it. I I think next year will be the time. I think they're waiting to see how the three remakes going to do first. I think the three remake will be a nice stopgap for them. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if, say, maybe Tokyo Game Show time next year, they're like, here's Persona 6. Because I don't, I don't think they want to get Persona 5 again, you know, where the first announcement was, what, coming winter 2014? Like, oh, yeah, how that, naive we once that were. And the fact that the game was in development way back during the PS3 era. Oh, yeah, that game took a long fucking time. It paid off for them. To be so fair, I think, though, Atlas so I think was, recently, the, we'll go ahead. Well, Atlas was in dire financial states for most of their that time period. Yeah, because their games just didn't sell. Well, certain some of them did, but it was like they just had no backing. Yeah, well, I think like the 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 Weeb revolution hadn't happened yet. Mm. So, like when Persona Five finally came out, it was perfect timing. Like that yeah. game couldn't have come out at a better time. Like that's really when anime was becoming like mainstream acceptable, at least over yes. here. And it was such like a deep game that like the fucking weebs who like know every fucking frame of One Piece could find something to latch on to. The people who have those kind of attention spans. And it just and it blew up. And I think even recently they said Persona Five passed ten million. No, it for an art for yeah, for a weeb RPG, that is fantastic. Like, that's top tier shit. I mean, the craziest thing was like when they put Persona, when they put uh, Joker in Smash Brothers, apparently it, sp- it spawned a lot of people to actually buy the game because they were curious. So, well, and it was so weird they did that when Persona 5 wasn't even on Switch yet. Yeah, I know. They went and Which bought another card. But that started the whole hashtag Persona on Switch, that sort of annoying thing for a few years, which I'm glad it happened. And I'm imagining, hopefully, the people who bitched enough about that actually went out and bought it. I hope so. I hope so. You know, because I've I've debated because I think the Persona games have left Game Pass now. So I've debated just getting five on Xbox just to have it back there, you know, because it's a game I will eventually get to because I've tried playing it and it's a very good game, but it is so slow to get started. Yeah, the first first part is 10 hours the first 10 fucking hours are a tutorial i i I will say though it's still better than four and i love four well four doesn't take that long to get up to get going 
in comparison, you know. You just do you just don't do anything in four for like the first couple hours and it's like <laughs> But the story bits are good. once you get past like this again it's gonna sound like Persona Five, once you get past the first dungeon, that's when things really like ramp up. Yeah, at Persona least for me. Persona four picks up the second you get to Yugi Go's castle, and then it's like, oh, this is great. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So but yeah, Persona Four is great. Persona Five is great, and I imagine Persona Six when that comes out, that that's gonna be a that's gonna be a big deal. So um, it'll, I'm be, curious. it'll be the, it'll be the Final Fantasy Eight of that of that series, which is a weird thing to say. Yeah. So I'm curious is um if the three remake does well, do they remake four? Maybe, but I think if they remake four, it'll be after six. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Atlas yeah. is so confusing sometimes with like what they're putting out. Four doesn't need that much of a remake. Like three kind of needs one because it's it's in well, a three, bit of a mess. Three's problem is there's three different versions of the game and no one knows which version to play because they're all yeah. none of them are perfect. But reload will be the 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 most perfect version, even though I think it doesn't have any of the FES stuff in it. No. Or any but, portable stuff. It's literally just a remake of Vanilla Three. Yeah, which I think is probably the way to go. Yeah, uh, we'll, I mean, we'll see. I haven't played Three, so I have no idea. But I yes, Three's good, but I'm I'm kind of met on it because I played Four first. Fair enough. Fair enough. But um, for Six, what color do you think they're gonna go? They haven't done green yet. Green seems a logical one. Because yeah, because well, three's blue, yellow is four, red is five. So And Persona one has a purple motif. And so does oh. two. Two is weird because two has purple and red. Interesting. Because two is a duology. There's two persona two. It, it's confusing. Mm-hmm. But I, I green seems like a way to go. They could maybe do some like environmentalism with that if they wanted to. I don't know. So yeah, I'm uh, curious I was, thinking, where I was also thinking. Was. I was also thinking like pink would be a pink. good one. That's a very persona color. I think they could go orange, but I think orange would be a, a little much after a while. You know. Well, I think so. orange is a bit. Cl- the thing with orange and pink are they're kind of close to red. That is true. But then again, yellow is kind of close to red too. Yeah. I just realized that the three, four, and five are the primary colors gang. Yeah. I just and I feel there. like. And green is kind of like the most unique secondary color. Yeah. Because most people don't think of green as a secondary color. You know, they view it as like a primary color. Well, because it's such a striking color. Yeah. And it's like, because it's like you mix blue and yellow to get green. And it's like that just in your head, it doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Like, how the hell do you get to those two? Like, like red and yellow making orange make perfect sense. Right. Right. You know, even red and blue making purple makes sense, right? Yeah. But, yeah. But, I mean, and plus with green, there's so many different shades of it and so many different ways you could use. Because the Persona games do, I think, a fantastic job of their primary color, you know? Yeah. Of incorporating it into the game in so many different ways. You know what I mean? So, I, I trust Atlas to to make a good Persona 6. Oh, and they also have that... um. Refantasio, whatever the fuck, like that weird fantasy thing they're doing now, which yeah. looks interesting. I mean, I'm an Atlas simp, so I'll buy anything they shit out. <laughs> I mean, it looks cool. It looks like they're trying to sort of take Persona and do more like fantasy stuff with it, hmm. but probably I'm, make it more of like a streamlined RPG. I'm all, which for I it. think is the way to go. It's interesting because a very similar series to Persona is like the Legend of Heroes, like Trails of Cold Steel. Ah, yes. That's like Persona. That series I'll never play. Yeah, they're they're a lot. (laughs) Yeah, like I've tried looking into that series and I just go, no. (laughs) Absolutely not. If you thought Yeast was confusing, that's Falcom's other series that's even more confusing somehow. Yeah. But, But then I've seen stuff that's like Disgaea. I've thought about getting into that, but I don't know where the fuck to start with that. <laughs> I think they're all standalone, so I believe you can start anywhere. Okay. But, you know, but is, uh, getting into Dragon, RPGs is tough. Is Dragon Quest 12 next year, or is that a ways out? That's a ways out. 
that's yep. a ways out. Like from what I hear with Dragon Quest, like Yuji Hori is play testing the three remake. So I expect an announcement about that next year. Thank God. I've been waiting way too long to play Dragon Quest three because I wanted to play the remake. Um, but then beyond that, I think 12 is a ways out because I mean, Dragon Quest is such a beloved, revered franchise. They don't have to churn them out every couple of years. Um, I mean, they've been doing it with all these like side games. I still haven't played the new monsters. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it, but I've heard it's not bad. Like it's better than the other side games they made, like Treasures, which really disappointed me. Um, and I was going to try the Adventure of Die game, but the reviews were not good at all. Yeah. So I just backed out. And then I'm... Monsters, I think it's gotten decent reviews. Well, Monsters is basically just Dragon Quest V if it was like just a Four. side series. Yeah, side series. Yeah, because you play as um, Sorrow, who is the, the main bad guy in four. So, well, I meant five in terms of the whole monster capture system. Well, yeah, but like, well, other uh, games in the Dragon Quest series have the monster capture system. True. Five's the one that kind of made it, was the first one that was like really big with it, though. Yeah, but it was kind of rudimentary. And true. You only kind of need it in a couple spots. Like once you get like your family. Um, you don't really need it anymore, but I always tell people with Dragon Quest V, like, as soon as you can, get a Slime Knight, and then hold on to that fucker for the rest of the game, because yeah, he just he sticks, he's really good. Slime Knights are really good to get in that game. I really want them to port 4, 5, and 6 to Switch, or Switch just modern consoles. I think they will for 12, since they did 1, 2, and 3 for 11, which made sense, because 11 is so closely tied to the... Um, Oh shit! What is that? Was what what's the shorthand for that? I can't uh, remember. Because four, five, and six are the Zenithian trilogy. Yes, it's one through three. Shit, shit. God, I should know this off the top of my head. Oh, fuck. God damn it! <laughs> I'm really losing my credentials here right now. Uh, uh I was. Uh, fuck. What the hell's it I called? Was... Uh, can't find any information. Oh, uh, I hate I hate that I don't like. Oh, the uh, Ed Edric trilogy. Oh, the Erdrick trilogy. Fuck Erdrick. yeah, because Erdrick. Yeah, because you play as Erdrick in three. Fuck, you're right. And then Zenithian trilogies for four, five, and six because of the the floating palace of Zenithia, which yep. well, it's floating in four and five, but in six, it's on the ground. Because for both of them, it's you have one and four, right? And then yep. two and five are sequels, and then three and six are prequels. Why I don't know. They did that intentionally, but and I then still seven, love. And then seven and eight, I believe, are part of the Erdrick trilogy chronology, but like far later. Nine yeah. and ten are kind of considered their own thing, and then eleven does the whole Ocarina of Time branching paths thing to connect the two trilogies <laughs> together. Lovely, yeah. It, it's love it's it. not as bad as you'd think. Realistically, there, though, you there can is time based, travel in eleven. Yeah, realistically, though, you can play most of them standalone and be fine. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's not like Final Fantasy where they're all standalone, like confirmed. There are connecting threads to the game. Yeah. Like jet, like definite story connections, but they're not that big a deal. Yeah. You know, it's like you have the two trilogies, which makes sense, and then beyond that, it's like, eh, they all loosely connect. Eleven feels like it's really trying to connect things together, um, and I think it does a good job for the most part. But, well, Eleven yeah, was great, it, it, but yeah, it, it's superfluous. It doesn't matter that much, and I think twelve is probably probably a sequel to Eleven in some ways, as far as like the story is concerned. At least that's the like, vibe I got from it because I don't know. I've, be I've, I've, I've hung mask. <laughs> I think it might be because I've hung on this and that when they first showed the logo, they had 11 and then they did another like strike to make it 12, which yeah. said to me, it's like they're going to be more directly connected in some ways. I don't know what that means. I wonder if it's going to be like a Tales of Zestera, Tales of area like kind of thing where they're like the same universe but they're kind of separate at the same time that could be it i could very well see that um but you know we'll see what happens 
Like, I still think, yeah, 12 is a good way out. And um, I think Corey had said he wasn't going to do any remakes until 12 was done. So the much desired Dragon Quest IX remake, which will probably happen after 12, is just going to be a long time. Yeah. So. Isn't 10 single player supposed to be coming out too? It's a long standing rumor. I think it, I think, well, with 10, they're still doing the offline like expansions. So I think once they finalize the offline expansion stuff, then they'll start working on translating it. That would be yeah. my guess because doing all of these expansion release chunks for 10 here, I just think would be pointless. Like, like I may just wait till it's done. And then I'll play it. Yeah. Because I definitely want to play play 10 so bad. But, you know. Especially because apparently, apparently 10 uses a Final Fantasy style battle system from what I've heard. So. Well, it's an MMO. Yeah, I've heard it uses like the action time battle system, the ATV system, though, in terms of its, its combat, which is. Yeah, I think it plays like Final Fantasy 11. I think that's like the MMO style that it goes for. But, I'm curious because I've I've only ever seen screenshots of it and none of them are very clear exactly what's going on. Oh, I've seen like gameplay footage of it, especially when the IP ban got lifted a few years ago. So you can technically download and play it if you want. But yeah. of course, there's nothing is translated. So you'll unless you really know Japanese, you're not going to know. I mean, there are people who um, I've tried to do like Google Translate stuff for it. Yeah. And some of them are done really well, but. I just I just don't want to do all that work. Yeah. <laughs> Call me crazy. <clears throat> I'm trying to think if there's anything else major that's happened recently. Um, well, the Game Awards, if you want to talk about those. Uh, we mentioned it a little bit the last episode. There was kind of they were kind of unremarkable, honestly. Yeah, just around. another another boring year. The Sega announcements were interesting. I'll, I'll say oh, that. yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. That got me hyped. And then people saw they did more trademarks for other stuff that we haven't seen yet. So I think somebody at Sega said, wait a minute. We have all these IPs and we're doing nothing with them. Why, why don't we like do things with them? You know? I hope somebody at Sega went to Sonic Team and said, take your fucking time. We're going to work on other shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's part of it actually because mm -hmm. Frontiers they put like five solid years of development in that game and I think and it really helped it's the best 3D game since Generations so yeah yeah and I think with Frontiers 2 they're going to take probably another five years or whatever to work on it so yeah. they're like yeah let's just do that and then in the meantime we'll bring back Jet Set Radio we'll bring back Crazy Taxi we'll bring back Shinobi we'll Hell, if they brought back for Outrun, if all they do is just like port um, that coast to coast Outrun game, I'm yeah. like, oh, oh, that game is so good. Oh See, my God. If they bring back Crazy Taxi, they better use the new fucking Offspring album. I mean, well, they've confirmed Crazy Taxi. It was in the footage. That That's what I'm saw. saying. If, if they do, like, if, if it comes out, like, and they're going for like the same feel, they better use the Offspring music. If at the very least they use the the famous Offspring song, at the very least you, you have to use the classic one. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my oh, head. Oh, uh, all I want. Yeah, all I want. You have to have that song there, otherwise I'm not going to buy it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's funny because Crazy Tech people forget there there is a Crazy Taxi too, and crazy yeah, but Taxi it was arcade 2. only. No, no, it's on Dreamcast. Oh, really? Yeah, it's Dreamcast only actually. Oh well, shit. Because I well because. I remember when I was looking through like Xbox stuff, original Xbox, and there was Crazy Taxi 3. And I'm like, well, where the fuck was 2? 2 was a Dreamcast exclusive. And it introduced the Crazy Hop, which is still like the most hilarious thing. That's You can just jump with the taxi now, and it's great. That's awesome. Um, oh, oh, it was late. It was late. Yeah. It, it was May 01. Shit. That is late. It was a cool game, though, because like they had like the crazy jump you could jump over stuff with the taxi you could pick up four passengers at once and do like four deliveries to separate locations which was nuts and honestly sucked because you would never have time but uh yeah and offspring were in that game too they used a different album though okay maybe they'll keep it up were they in crazy taxi three? Oh yeah oh good, yeah, they, good. 
three brought like basically stuff from uh one two and then original stuff for three uh they brought all the songs from one and two plus some new ones for three like a whole but three is honestly a hidden gem on the uh original xbox yeah i've never played three but i've never owned an original xbox i mean it's not like any high high art like it's literally just crazy taxi <laughs> <laughs> but crazy taxi is not high art what you're kidding me well people go into crazy taxi 3 expecting it to be like miles better than two and i'm like no it's not yeah. it's it's just more crazy taxi like it's what you expect yeah there's, oh yeah there's the gba one which is i don't think i have it oh catch a ride catch a ride is impressive technically but like as a game it's like you play it like for like five minutes and you're like that's good i'm done like like super monkey ball jr yeah like they're impressive they're kind of fun but then you're you're done after like five minutes yeah there was also the the fair wars on psp which it's a remake um, of two one and two one and two but it doesn't have the offspring music so it's trash (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it uses generic rock music and it's so lame Ugh. they couldn't get um the the sonic butt rock guy to do the music i know right like jim sonori like, like make, yeah sonori would have been perfect just throw some crush crush 40 in there people will be fine yeah get tell over. crush tell crush 40 to do an offspring impression that would have been amazing johnny Juelli would probably try it too that's the sad part <laughs> Exactly. And then, oh, they did a couple mobile games, as of course they did, that nobody uh, remembers. Hilariously, the port of Crazy Taxi on iOS has the Offspring music back. It's like the only port recently that has the music. Yeah. So I get the sense if Sega's going to do this, they're going to do it properly. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that the Jet Set Radio information was probably the most telling because that's the one that everyone got super hyped for. Oh, yeah, because people are really hype over jet set nowadays they're acting like it's the best thing ever like jet set's great don't get me wrong but it was a cool game but i feel like a lot of people that hype it up haven't actually played it yeah yeah they're like mother three people because it's like i love jet set radio jet grind Mm -hmm. radio but you you play that game now and you're like it's fun but it is jank as fuck (laughs) oh yeah the xbox one's pretty good though oh yeah just i've I've played a bit i've played a bit of future yeah i played it on was that one? That one might have been 360 back and pad. I can't uh, remember. Well, oh yeah, backwards and battle. I believe. I believe most of the Sega games were. Yeah, and I think I played it on there, and it was solid. Um, but the reason, and people wanted that to be Series X backwards compatible, but I think the music licensing is the only thing that got in the way of that. Yeah, that game has concept of love on it. That's like one of my favorite songs from that yeah. series. Yeah, but then beyond that, it's like a new Shinobi game. That Shinobi game looks fucking cool as hell. Like it has like hand-drawn 2d r and it like looks very shinobi 3 and i'm like if it's shinobi 3 with hand-drawn art it's over we're done great fantastic like i always said like the two best shinobi games were shinobi 3 and then the ps2 game ps2 shinobi is really good it'd be cool to see them attempt something like that again but i don't know if it would fly just well, because they think, it's they think they no one I was going to say, they think nobody likes it because Nightshade bombed, but Nightshade Nightshade did bad. bomb, but to be fair, nobody knew it was a Shinobi game. Yeah. So that was on them. Um, another Streets of Rage. That one has me paused a little bit because yeah. we had Streets of Rage 4, which they didn't do, but was really fucking good. Mm-hmm. And this looks more... Honestly, the little bit we saw reminded me of um, the spiritual successor to it a fighting force and oh the game that started is uh streets of rage 4 and then yeah. sega, sega didn't want it so it became its own thing yeah it reminded me a little bit of that and i'm like oh no it didn't look like streetwise but to be fair i don't think a streetwise will ever happen again well, so to be fair streetwise was supposed to be a very different game as well yeah it would have been and bad then, no matter cap, what i've got <laughs> no shit all over it yeah but that game's kind of fucked anyway and then Golden Axe, it, it'd be cute to try another Golden Axe because I have Beast Rider and Beast Rider is... Oh, I forgot about Beast Rider. Holy oh, shit. Oh, yeah. It, it's not great, but I have by the fun Iron, time with the, it. The, the same studio that made Iron Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's not great, but eh, I had a fun time with it. I only remember it because of 
Gilius Thunderhead says, buy my balls in it at one point. Buy my balls. Yeah, I was pissed you couldn't play as him because he was he was always my uh, my go to. Everyone liked playing as the uh, the Viking with the uh, axe or whatever. Yeah, who wouldn't like the Viking, right? But yeah, they also like there was more IP stuff where I think it was like Alex Kidd, Outrun, Super Monkey Ball. I think Kid Chameleon showed up, and I'm like, that's a are, that's a deep are, guy. Are, are, <laughs> They, are we doing kid, kid? No, like I want another like Beyond Oasis. Yeah, I want that, actually, that was actually a, a series. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I, Legend of Oasis on the Saturn. Like I want another like the ooze. Like let's do the ooze, man. If we're gonna if we're gonna deep cut, make, make it deep, make it just make it good. Like, give me vec. The ooze is fine. Uh, give me Vector Man. I want another Vector Man. Vector Man's awesome. Yeah. Vector Man was really good. I shouldn't and, say the uh, ooze is bad. It's just frustrating as fuck to play. Sometimes. Yes. Fr- just like Comic Zone. They're both frustrating yeah. as hell. Technically but hell. impressive, but <laughs> miserable. But to hell. Play. And of course, me being me. Shining Force 4, please. Please. And Fantasy but... Star 5 while you're at it. <laughs> no, Fantasy Star's an MMO these days. Anyway. Fuck that. Give me a regular one. <laughs> it's never going to happen, man. Fantasy Star Online's too big. So. But like with Monkey Ball, I don't know what the hell they would do with that. They like just made they actually, a Monkey Ball like a year ago. That, that wasn't original though. Oh, I don't. That that's they, just they haven't, um, made, a, they haven't made a good. It's, it's one and two again. Oh, it is. It's just one and two again. I was gonna say they haven't made a good Monkey Ball since two. So exactly, that's why they didn't try again. Super Monkey did, Ball, did Banana play, Mania. Did you ever play Mon- uh, Monkey Ball Adventure? <laughs> yeah, I tried. What a fucking! Oh, God. I, I couldn't. I couldn't get an hour, and I had no fucking idea what to do. I love the idea of it, but it is just not executed well at all. It was like one of the final games before Traveler's Tales became the slave to Lego. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, um, but I've I've played through Banana Blitz, and Banana Blitz is disappointing. The one on 3DS was fine, not yeah. great, just fine. Sounds about right. Did they mention everyone's favorite shitty series, Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg? They have one game, and that's a good I, game. Don't be, don't be that way. I don't, I don't know. It's I played it recently, and I'm like, this isn't as great as I remember. I like it. It has that Sonic Team charm to it. Yeah, Man, that's I, didn't, true. I didn't, I didn't see Knights, though. I would love to see another Knights game. Yeah, the one on Wii was fine. Other than the the one we use very good. Other than the, the those random platforming stages with the humans, like those game, those I like that game a lot. Yeah, so I, I I think that I think, I mean Sega has a huge just treasure trove to go through. Oh yeah, Afterburner showed up. Why not? Fuck it, Alex Kidd. Sure, why not? <laughs> Didn't they also just do that recently? Well, that wasn't them. That was another oh, kind. Yeah. And I played. Th- I bought that, and I played through that. I bought the collector's edition of it. Beat Wasn't it, it all right? Got buyer's remorse and sold it. Uh, oh, it was fine. But there, um, what makes the game playable is that they have options to like not make the game so fucking slip slidey. You know, there's literally like options in the game to make it more playable. And once you turn those on, it's fine. That's a Master System game I really want to find at some point is uh, Alex Kidd in Shinobi World. Oh, I've played that. It's just, it's it's the arcade Shinobi, but with Alex yeah, Kidd. But with Alex Kidd. <laughs> and, and the arcade Shinobi's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, looking the, forward to that. Hopefully, Sega can take a fucking break from Sonic and make something else. And Yakuza, or Like a Dragon. True. They're churning well, least, those out crazy. I mean, they're good. They're high-quality games. But they're churning them out at a rate that's True. like they need to they need to slow down. Yeah, if they have one that's not good, that's when the, the sign should be like, all right, slow down. Exactly. In fact, just out of curiosity, the last Traveler's Tales game that was not Lego was the Chronicles of Narnia Prince Caspian. They made... Huh. Did they make yeah. the original one too? Oh, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe? Yes, they did. Okay, that wasn't bad. Yeah, I played it. It for, reminded for a it, game. it reminded me of the Lord of the Rings games from the same time, but not nearly as good. Did you ever play that 
original game that Traveler's Tales tried to make, the Haven game or whatever? Haven. Haven. I it's... don't think so. Oh, Call of the King. Oh, yeah, that that game was tried to be so ambitious and it like failed at everything it did. It tried. What is this? It's a 3D platform. It, it's trying to be like Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank ish. Okay. Um, it literally like fails. At, it it tries to do like everything and fails at pretty much everything it tries to do. Intended uh, as and- the first part of a trilogy, Haven took over three years to develop. Combines action, platforming, puzzle, shoot 'em up, racing, and space combat elements. Published by Midway. Oh my god. Yeah. It wow. Literally, and it ends on a cliffhanger, like on a on a downer cliffhanger, and it's like exactly how this series deserved to end because it was shit. <laughs> oh my god. Apparently, the protagonist was originally supposed to be the uh, the old Traveler's Tales mascot. Oh, um, that thing had a name. It probably did. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, they're, they're such. A, they're such a weird developer. Traveler's Tale. John John Burden is a very talented programmer. He just yeah. like never seems to be able to finish, like fully realize anything he does. Yeah, poor guy. Because I'm looking at Traveler's Tales like gameography, and there's. I mean, let's see. The Toy Story game was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mickey Mania is really good. Muppets Race um, Mania. Fucking love that yeah, game. Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic R. Ooh. We talked talk about those already. We talked about those. Uh, the Bugs Life P- PlayStation game. Oh, Toy Story 2. They I also made really Rascal. Game. Rascal. Rascal. You rascally rabbit. You know the worst part oh, about Rascal? Oh, is- thank God. They did They did the one weakest link video game. Okay, they are, they are saved in my heart. I've played that game. Um, oh, yeah, they did Wrath of Cortex. I forgot about yeah. that. They also did Twin Sanity. Twin Sanity's good. I really like Twin Sanity. It. They didn't get to finish it. That was like their big, like the guy, who, the director of the game has said multiple times, they've activated, well, I guess Microsoft now, but um, if they will let him, he wants to finish it, like do it the way he intended, but I doubt it'll ever happen. Finish Twin Sanity? It wasn't finished? No, Twin Sanity's infamously not finished. Like there's so oh. many things that were cut from it. Interesting. And it's still a good game. That's That shows how impressive that team was. Oh, yeah. I really liked Twin Sanity. And then they did Lego Star Wars right after that. And then, but that's the thing. But the Lego Star Wars stuff didn't, it wasn't until Indiana Jones where, like, that's when it became a monster. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because they did one and two, then they did the complete saga. And then, yeah. And then it's just been Lego basically ever since. And I can't imagine just doing Lego games. At this, at the rate that they do, I can't imagine it, man. I mean, it pays the bills, so <laughs> that it does. That it does. Though I do credit Lego for the the company for now. They're starting to branch out mm. with their stuff because they have that was it Lego Builders Journey that like puzzle game with Lego, which looks like I'd really like it. There's that like Lego Forza game that came out recently, um, and they, they've done some other stuff with uh, the, with with lego like style games which i think that, is the way to go that original one the, the lego city undercover was actually really good yeah yeah that game's not too bad though did traveler's tales make that i believe they did i think that was uh, okay. what, like one of the few times they got to do something original for once because for some reason looking through their gameography i didn't see it in there unless i just completely overlooked it i swear it was them it was made by traveler's tales fusion which oh, is yeah, like they, they that's a smaller right? studio. Yeah, they have spin-off studios just for Lego shit. Um so yeah. Good good for them, I guess. <laughs> They're this Yeah. Oh, Lego Brawls, that like Smash Brothers clone. Uh fucking what else do they have? A turn based strategy game. No. Brick Tales. Brick Tales is puzzle adventure game. But that's not the one I'm I'm thinking of Builder's Journey, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, Brick Tales, I haven't played. So. But yeah, I think there's still a lot of interesting things you could do with Lego games. And I and I imagine Traveler's Tales will probably still be churning these out. Um, oh yeah, Lego Fortnite just happened. I, well, why did, uh, how the <laughs> fuck did I forget? Did you see they put Peter Griffin in Fortnite recently? Yeah, they're going to put it. I think we're going to be in Fortnite eventually. So 
I, I don't care about Fortnite at all, and I'm not really even a Family Guy guy. But um, when <laughs> I saw the when I saw the Peter Griffin thing, I I immediately laughed just because like I saw his his uh death animation, and he literally does the knee grab thing, and I'm like I'm like that's good. I enjoy that. Yeah. Lois, it's like that one time I was in Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna reference it on the show oh, yeah. because they don't have any they don't have any material anymore. So Family Guy's just a bunch of uh cutting cutout gags with like an attempt at story in the background. Exactly. Though I will say I played a bit of a Skywalker saga, like them like remaking the whole Lego Star Wars thing and uh, revamping the gameplay. I yeah, liked what I played of it. Okay, I'm I'm on the opposite side. I didn't really like it that much. Oh, why not? So me and Matt played it. I was when I was visiting him a while back and we got stuck on the Genosis level and just could not figure out what to do. And like, it just was okay. frustrating. I don't see, know. I, Maybe did, it's just see, a, I didn't get that far. So, okay. I don't know. I just, I, I think it also just cause I'm tired of the Lego games at this point, but that's fair. I, I, I think at least with Skywalker saga, they, they were trying something different, like revamping a bunch of things and, and all that. And I think if they I would like to see them do this, but with like the Indiana Jones stuff. Because mm. I think as I played through Indiana Jones, the Lego one, I liked it. But if now they're gonna try to make the game like more complex and more involved, like that's the series to go back to to try yeah. to do something more interesting with it. So and, and plus, I mean, we got the new movie, so you might as well just add that oh, to yeah. it, right? So now you got true. like five movies to go through. Yeah, you got three good movies and two iffy movies to go through, and there you go. I still remember the fridge, and people were so mad about that damn fridge for so long. That's far from that movie's worst problem. <laughs> I thought the fridge was funny, to be honest. It fits with the whole Indiana Jones death trap thing. Well, the people, the people that were always like, "It's ruining the legacy of Indiana Jones." I'm like, Indiana Jones has always been kind of stupid inherently. Yeah, like I, th I think honestly, I think the new movie does a worse job of destroying his legacy mm. especially with doing the whole cg harrison ford thing which felt completely unnecessary yeah that whole opening scene goes on way too fucking long and then and then the whole like he's in new york and yelling at his like hippie like uh, like neighbors for playing magical mystery tour too loud and he just like goes on another adventure and it's just i don't know man i feel dial of destiny they they could have went a little bit maybe more meta with it you know or yeah. um an idea i heard that i thought would have been awesome is you have like the indiana jones like theme and it's like a big adventure but it's just him getting to a lecture you know <laughs> like you do the whole thing like like he's struggling to put his clothes on and eat breakfast and you know but it's like bah, 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 bah. and then like, ends the, with him, uh... like just getting to the lecture to like talk about you know, kind of like um, Uncharted Four, where like you do that opening thing, and then it fight, it's it's literally just Nathan Drake recovering something in a dive, like thing. yes, yes, but do that with Indiana Jones, like especially because he's an old fuck, so it makes perfect sense to do. But I get the sense that like Harrison Ford is above that, you know, like he would yeah. be willing to do that. Uh, I mean, I love him, but you know, you, you get the sense he's not a guy who's willing to make fun of himself. No. Yeah. That, that just reminds me. I really want to replay Uncharted 4 now. I'm good. I, I fucking love that. I, game. That's that's like one of my that's like my favorite PS4 game. I, I liked three more. Three is really good too. Honestly, they're all really good. Eh, one needs a remake. Well, so playing one on the HD collection on PS5, like I feel like covers up some of the jank of that game but yeah it probably does need some work i mean what the hell are blue point even doing right now yeah that's a good question <laughs> i don't know what they're doing I, at this point. i feel i feel like a remake of one would be the way to go if you're gonna have them be the big budget remake team that's that's the game to do man because it can yeah. still fit with that prestige bullshit you know and people would be excited to try it you know, because that one kind of has been lost to time, I think, ironically enough. So yeah. that would be the one to bring back. Yeah, that's for sure. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm really looking forward to next year. I'm honestly oh. next year. I'm thinking it's going to be a backlog year. 
Well, that's my main plan, but then it's like, fuck, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth comes out at the end of January. True. And that's going to be my entire February, so that's going to happen. Um, there's there's probably going to be one or two other games that hit, but we'll see. And as far as I know, the Switch 2 is next year. Yeah. So that's... Maybe that's then gonna... they'll announce on, uh, Prime 4. Prime 4. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I think that's what they're doing. I think they're waiting I... for Switch 2. I hope so because I want to stop making the fever dream joke because at this point even I'm starting to get tired of it. <laughs> but at, at this point with Prime Four, just make a cross gen, you know, and and they yeah. can use that game as to be like, oh, look how good it looks on the Switch One, looks great, right? But yeah. put it on the Switch Two and it looks even better, baby. We put the N- Nvidia sheen on it or whatever, right? And it's gonna look fucking amazing, and that's gonna get us to buy it. And then for the casuals, it's like, here's your 3D Mario. Which I'm going to buy both of those. Because you can't launch the Switch 2 with Prime 4 by itself. You can't. No, you can't do that. That's not going to work. You need something else. Yeah. And I think, and I, they're probably not going to do Odyssey 2. At this point, we would have got it by now. So it's probably going to be something different. But I'm all there, baby. You know I'd me. Like I, love mix. My, I love my 3D Marios. I would love a mixture of Odyssey style with uh, the the bonus like bowser's fury stuff i think that's what they're doing bowser's fury felt like a test run for what they want the next 3d mario to be yeah i'm, so I'm curious we'll regardless it. i mean it's 3d mario i'm there i, I love me some 3d mario now, the real question especially is, since wonder disappointed me yeah yeah i like superstars more and even that's not a perfect game <laughs> I did like superstars. Shout out to Sonic Superstars. Yep. Yeah. Uh, th- if you want to hear more, Rack was on an episode of Fine Time talking about Sonic Superstars. Indeed, I was. Uh man. So the real question, though, I have to ask: When are we going to get the 3DO Legacy Collection? <laughs> Who owns those games? <laughs> Who owns that? Like, I don't know. I just joke because like, we're we're supposedly getting plumbers don't wear ties re-released. It's yeah. Point. Where the fuck is that? Where is that? They opened up fucking pre-orders for the physical, and I and people were like, "Well, when are you gonna like you know do the 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 digital version?" Right? Nothing. Radio fucking silence. Like at least with the Gex collection, it's like that'll probably they didn't give us any dates on it. So whatever, right? But this, it's like. They gave us a time frame. What the fuck? And then I just I just looked it up, right? And on Twitter, yeah. it says, here, I'll, I'll read the tweet for you. To the fans of Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, it turns out releasing a game isn't as easy as unclogging a toilet. It's actually quite a lot harder. We had originally wanted to release it on December 8th, but that turned out to be a bit of a pipe dream. They originally said it was in September. The dev team at Limited Run is working hard to pump this thing out, but they'll need a little bit more time to assure that the launch runs as smoothly as John John's bike after a tune-up. How what hard is it, it to is? port a fucking slideshow? It, right? <laughs> after all, it's our duty to bring you the best product we can create. If you bought one of our physical editions, there's no need to sink into despair. This delay will not affect our production timeline. Standard copies will go out Q1 2024. It'll probably just come with a patch. Uh, the definitive version will snake its way out of development and launch digitally on March 5th, 2024. For real this time, no more delays. Yeah, we'll def- see about that. Def- the, just putting definitive version on Plumbers Don't Wear Ties is the fucking funniest thing ever. Yeah, we can't get fucking Mother 3, but we can get Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. I'm just like, how, how hard is it to pour a slideshow? I know, right? March 5th, <laughs> That is that is a Tuesday, which is when we record these fucking things. So, so probably March 12th or March 19th will be our Plumbers Don't Wear Ties review in 2024, yeah. provided it actually comes out. So for those of you waiting, it, it'll happen in March because yeah. I will, I will buy that and I will sink into it. I will, I'll do fucking, I'll watch, cool. I'll watch, I'll watch all the random bullshit in there as well. Cause there's a bunch of bonus content. They added like a dungeon crawler mode for some reason. There's a lot of weird <laughs> stuff in there. So you can, enter, you can enter in the nude code and you can see one picture of side boob and a lot of man ass. Well, the thing is the girl who's in that, 
I forget her name, but I think she's done like adult stuff before. She's so, a she's like, a she's a uh, wrestling wrestling. I think. Or she well, was, like, she was sort of- well, she was part of uh, Glow, like the original version of Glow in the eighties. So, yeah, what what the fuck's her? Uh, Jean Basson, if I'm saying yeah. that correctly. Yeah, she was Hollywood during the original Glow, um, but then she did a bunch of other stuff. Um, just like as like a stunt woman and acted in a bunch of random stuff. So she she's been all over. So she 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 she's had her her fair. Um, yeah. She she owns a soap company now. So if you want to buy soap from her, there you go. I always laugh because um, the the nude code is like the most disappointing part of fucking plumbers don't wear ties because you see way more John than you do see of Jane. That's all I'm gonna tell yeah. you. Yeah, but it's like if you want to see boobs, it's like these days like. Trust me, there's there's enough there's enough boobs on the internet to to keep you going. So honestly, the censor but the censor face is more interesting than than uh, oh with the nose, face. yeah, yeah. So strange. That came. That came. I'm not gonna say anymore just because I want to save it for the episode. But oh boy, I mean, yeah, I, I I'm gonna write a fucking thesis on it when I get that when I get my hands on it. Yeah. <laughs> so but we will have the definitive review of the definitive edition of plumbers don't wear ties. And I guarantee you when we do that review, we'll probably get a lot more engagement than normal because yeah. it'll be hot on the that, market at the time. I mean, that's, that's like the, the pinnacle of 3d. Like that's the game. Little, it's sad that like Gex is considered like the, the killer app of 3d. Although I argue uh, it's road rash, but that, that's besides the point. Um, Gex is considered like the pinnacle of 3DO, but I'm pretty sure the game most people remember the system for these days is plumbers to wear ties. For the memes. For the memes and just how absurd it is. Like it is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But honestly, other than that, we've managed to stretch this out almost two hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's enough content for your ears, listeners. Yeah. Um, and so this is the, this will be the last time you'll hear from us before Christmas. So I guess wish everyone who celebrates a Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all the others. Yeah. I hope our Hanukkah enjoyers enjoyed Hanukkah. It has already happened. That is true. And yeah, New Year's is coming and that's new year, new show, new uh, season. Well, yeah. New season of the show. New season. Yeah. I guess, kind of. I, I I don't have seasons exactly laid out on the show like I do GNC, but it's all good. Yeah, we'll we'll be back, and Need for Speed is next. Uh, oh another yeah, another iconic series that made its start on 3DO. Yes, yes, and then we can maybe discuss like New Year's stuff for the show. So, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so figure with that, we'll wrap this one up for now so once again guys uh, thanks for joining us on the 3do experience you can find 3do experience all the pod- podcasting platforms um all of our links are linktree slash the barber who games and if you'd like to join the gnc podcast discord server uh it is free open to anybody so with that uh once again guys we will see you all next time Bye bye playing on a 3DO system. What are you playing with? <laughs>